I had so much fun grading your footage the last time and you guys said you wanted to do it again. So here we are with five more of your clips. If you want to get into more detail on color grading in Final Cut Pro, then check out my color grading masterclass, link down below. For the first shot, we have a drone shot of this cool looking landscape. First, I'll add a custom LUT effect and apply DJI's D-Log LUT. Next, I'll hit Command Alt B to add a balance color effect, which you can also find here in the modify menu. It defaults to being the first effect applied in the chain, so I'll move it after the LUT and it also defaults to the automatic correction, which I'll change to white balance. I can zoom in here to find something that is supposed to be white, like this woman's skirt, and I'll use the color picker to select it. I'll zoom back out and we can see the difference that this adjustment makes. Then I'll add a color wheels adjustment and boost the global saturation. The sand, sky and water lends itself to a nice teal and orange type of look. So I'll add some orange into the highlights, maybe saturate it a little bit, and then I'll add some blue or teal into the shadows. When Jack submitted this clip, he mentioned that he thought he underexposed for the skin tone and he found that the background was too bright. So let's see what we can do about that. First, I'll add the custom LUT effect and apply the Sony S-Log3 conversion LUT. Next, I'll use the crop tool and crop into the skin like this so that I can isolate it on my waveform scope. Usually you want your skin tones to lie in the 40 to 70 IRE range, leaning more towards 70 IRE, and I find that this really depends on the shot. So it's more of a guideline than a hard and fast rule in my opinion. Here the majority of the skin tone lies below 70, so I'll add a color wheels adjustment and slightly boost the global brightness to bring the skin tone up. I'll turn the crop off so I can see the entire shot. I'm going to also drop the shadows a little bit so that his suit still looks black and has nice contrast. When applying a LUT and making a global brightness adjustment, you'll want to add the brightness adjustment before the LUT for the best results. Have a close look at the exposure on this man's face when I drag the color wheels adjustment before the LUT. What you'll notice is that by doing a global brightness adjustment, the sky is pretty blown out. So let's fix that by adding a shape mask on this color wheels adjustment. I'll position the shape mask over this man and increase the feathering to smooth out the edges. This will work well because it's a static interview shot, but you could also track your subject if your subject moves around. I'll select the outside portion of the mask and drop the global brightness and the shadows a touch. That will only affect the background and not our subject. I'll hit done now that the exposure is looking good and then we can see by looking at the vector scope that this shot is not very saturated. The further the scope extends from the center, the more saturated the shot is. So I'll add another color wheels adjustment and boost the global saturation. I'll also boost the saturation in the midtones to saturate the skin tone a bit more. Now that we have more color in the shot, we can see that the white balance is off. I'll hit Command Alt B to add a balance color effect and I'll drag that after my color wheels adjustment and change it from automatic to white balance. Then I can use the color picker to select an area of white in the shot. If I click around, you'll see how I get different results even though I'm clicking on white areas. In times like this where the balance color effect is not so reliable, you can fix the white balance by relying on your scopes. Let's delete the effect and activate the crop tool, reposition it to cover an area of white like in his shirt over here, and if you look at the scopes, you can see how the red, green and blue channels are all at different levels. When something is white, all three channels are equal on the scope, so I'll add another color wheels adjustment and adjust the temperature to get the blue and red channels to match. And now the shot looks a little bit purple, so I can adjust the tint slider to introduce more green into the shot and get those three channels to line up. Now I can go and uncheck the crop here and you'll see that the white balance is much better on our subject, which is the most important part of the shot. The lighting inside is different to outside, so there are essentially two different white balances at play here. You could create a mask and adjust the inside and outside to get the white balance outside looking less blue, but in this case, I would just add a hue saturation curves adjustment and then I can desaturate the brightest part of the image on the luma versus saturation curve, which is outside. That will immediately make the sky look more white and less blue. Lastly, I want to double check the skin tones on this shot, so let's activate the crop again and use the tool to crop into the skin one more time. It looks a little red and doesn't quite lie on the skin tone indicator line. I'll add another hue saturation curves adjustment 
and I'll use the color picker to select the skin tone and I'll change the hue slightly away from red to a more orange color. You can see how we are pulling it closer to the skin tone indicator line. Let's go back and uncheck the crop to see the full screenshot. For this next shot of this guy walking past this cool car, I'm going to grade it using Cinema Grade. Cinema Grade has got to be one of the fastest and easiest plugins to use for color grading, especially when you use its shortcuts in your workflow. Let me show you how it works. I'll add the Cinema Grade plugin and open up the controls. I'll start by adding an input LUT here to convert from log to rec 709. And what I like about Cinema Grade is that you can do point and click color grading. So instead of fiddling with tools, you simply click on what you want to change, like exposure over here, and then you can click and drag up or down on the footage to increase or decrease the exposure. You can select the contrast icon and do the same. The real power comes in when you add shortcuts. If you have a look here, you can hit E for exposure, C for contrast, S for saturation, V for HSL vectors, and W for white balance, for example. So we've already adjusted our exposure and contrast, but I can hit Shift C to change the pivot point of the contrast curve and click and drag to adjust that. I'll hit W to activate the white balance and I can click and drag to change it. Let's make it a little warmer. I'll hit Shift W to change the tint and we can push it ever so slightly towards green. Now I want to have more precise control over my exposure. So to do that, I'll hit Shift E and I'll click in the highlights to create this little point and then I'll drop the highlights down. I'll click over here in the midtones to create another point and I'll bring the midtones up. Lastly, I can click to create another point in the shadows and I'll bring the shadows down to maintain good contrast in the shot. I'll hit S for saturation and boost the global saturation. I can hit Shift S and click to create a point in the shadows and I'll desaturate them. I'll add another point in the highlights and saturate that. For the final step on this grade, I'll hit V for the HSL curves and you'll see that once you have clicked to add a point on a specific color, you can drag up and down to adjust the hue, shift click and drag to change the saturation, or command click and drag to adjust the luma. So let's create a point on the green grass here, and I'll drag to change the hue to a yellow orange color. I'll shift click and drag to desaturate it, and I'll command click and drag to brighten it up slightly. I'll hit apply, and just like that, my grade is done. To make your grading experience even faster, if you have Cinema Grade applied to multiple clips, you can just use the up and down arrow keys to move from one shot to the next and grade them all. You can assign similar clips to groups, and then if you update the grade on one clip, it will update all the clips in the group. In the final grading tab, you have access to a bunch of other controls, including film grain, and you can also apply creative LUTs from the sidebar on the left. If you want to check out Cinema Grade, I'd recommend downloading the free trial to try it for yourself. And if you're interested in purchasing it, make sure you use the code down below to get 20% off. This next shot is an iPhone clip of a pretty sunset that I think we can really bring to life. First, let's get the contrast right by adding a color curves adjustment. I'll use the color picker to select this darker area and I'll brighten it up so we can get some more detail in the foreground. I'll also click in the sky here to create another point and I'll brighten that up as well. Next, I'll drop the mid-tones here so that we have a bit more contrast in the shot. Then I'll add a color wheels adjustment and boost the saturation. I'll add another color wheels adjustment and this is where we are really going to bring the sunset to life. I only want to affect the sky and not the rocks in the foreground. So I'll add a color mask and I'll make sure that the mask type is set to HSL. I'll disable the hue and saturation for the mask and focus on the luma. I'll click on view masks and adjust the slider here to select the sky and the water. Increasing the distance between these two points softens the mask. Now that I'm happy with the selection, I'll click on view masks again to exit the mask view and I'll add a good amount of orange using the global puck. I'll also boost the saturation a bit more. Using the tint slider, I'll add some magenta into the sky, which will give us that really nice purple pink hue in the sunset. If I go back to the inspector, I'll disable the mask so you can see what the effect would look like if we didn't isolate the sky and the water. In some instances, you might want that purple hue to appear on the rocks, but in this case, I feel like excluding the rocks from the adjustment draws your attention to the sky more. For the final shot, we have this great drone real estate shot from Raphael. By looking at my waveform, I can see that the shot is slightly underexposed, just a little bit. 
When converting from log to rec 709 with the LUT, you get the best results if you correct the exposure before the LUT. So let's add a color wheels adjustment first and boost the global brightness a little bit to bump up the waveform so that the majority of the scope is closer to 50 IRE. Right now it's a bit lower than that, so we just need a little bump up. Then I can add a custom LUT effect and I'll apply a D-Log LUT. If I turn off the brightness adjustment before the LUT, you can see the difference it makes to the log to rec 709 conversion. Let's add another color wheels adjustment and I'll boost the global saturation. Next, I'll add a color curves adjustment and I'll crush the black areas and boost the highlights. I'll also create a slight S curve by adding these two points here. Lastly, I'll add a hue saturation curves adjustment and I'll add a few points to the curve here to saturate the green areas of the shot, which will make it look really lush. If you enjoyed this video, then you will love my color grading masterclass, which has tips just like these and more and lays the foundation that you need in order to master color grading in Final Cut Pro, whether you're a beginner or an experienced editor. I'll link to that down below, so please go ahead and check that out. You'll also get my Fire and Ice LUT pack for free when you sign up for the course. It might be a while before I do another one of these color grading your footage videos, but maybe that's something you guys want to see more of. If it is, let me know in the comments down below, and who knows, maybe it'll become a regular thing on the channel. If you missed the first one, go ahead and watch that next and I'll see you in the next video.